Hello, everybody. My name is Steve, the Affordable Life Coach. If you're interested in a complimentary consultation, email me. It's in the description. And then the sessions have are life enhancing and extremely affordable uh, afterwards. One of the things that comes up in life, and if you've been a viewer of my channel, you know I'm a big advocate of honest, open, direct communication. And communication is the glue that it hears relationships, strengthens and bonds relationships. And when there's a breakdown of communication because one person feels like the other person's gonna be defensive or not receptive, what ends up happening is the other person then walks on eggshells and and is fearful that they're going to say something and the person's going to get angry and it's going to ex explode into an argument or confrontation. And most people, understandably so, are confrontational avoidant. But the it's a short-term gain for long-term pain because the sacrifices we pay when we don't express our emotions in a healthy constructive way when we're not honest with people when we're more concerned about being liked than speaking the truth when our values are comfort ease security safety and approval our life is not going to feel fulfilled and our relationships are not going to be as authentic as they could be and deeply connected and one of the things that you'll notice is there'll be there's a lot of superficiality in relationships whether that's familial relationships office, coworker relationships, management, employee relationships, even friend relationships. And I coach a lot of people, and this is a common theme, that they just don't share how they feel. Now, obviously in coaching, it's a safe space. And so people feel comfortable that they can express how they feel without uh, fear of being judged or ridiculed, or have some negative consequence happen to them, like they're ostracized, or they're punished, or they lose their job, or they don't get the promotion. And when we live our lives in fear, we then avoid things that we think will have a negative reaction. And it just has this slippery slope where before you know it, we're not ourselves anymore. And it can become, you can identify more strongly with the mask you wear and the different social situations you find yourself in than the person who you organically, authentically are. And you might not even realize that you are in this deep, dark hole because it's normalized in society. It's normalized in culture. The culture thrives on superficiality, lies, BS, propaganda, just a lot of static, a lot of noise. And the real underlying deep-seated important issues are not being discussed in friendships, relationships, and in society at large, whether it's our culture, whether it's our politics. Everything is just like a show. Everything is just shallow end of the pool and people don't want to go in the deep end of the pool. And it's a very effective way to just dumb down the, the population, dumb down the culture and dumb down ourselves with staring at phones, scrolling on social media. Hardly anybody reads books anymore. And it's just a deteriora deterioration of the social cohesiveness social cohesiveness and fabric of our society and culture and connections. And the most important thing when I'm coaching people is the ones that struggle with feeling down, having low moods, uh, struggling with anxiety, not feeling purpose in life. It's because their life is shallow. Their life is somewhat fake. They don't feel that they can express themselves freely you're going to get canceled, you're going to get judged, you're going to get punished and ostracized. So you don't know when you talk to a person, am I hearing the truth from them? Are they telling me what I want to hear? Are they smiling my face and talking about me behind my back? Is this how they truly feel? Because some of the most dangerous people are the fake 
people pleasers, the nice guys, the nice women, the people, I don't call them nice guys, nice women, the, the selfish people, the people that they care more about your approval than they care about telling you the truth. And when you tell someone the truth, you are willing to sacrifice yourself. You're willing to t get a, uh, take a few punches or jabs or lumps in order to tr try to have a deeper, more meaningful connection and relationship with the person. So this is what we want to live, how we want to live if we want to have meaningful relationships and meaningful connections. And the beautiful thing about this is when you start living like this, you start attracting like-minded people. How many people never see the true you? And like two ships in the night passing each other, they don't even know they're there. You, you're not advertising and you're not able to attract someone that would value a person that is truthful, honest, has uncomfortable and difficult conversations and speaks the truth. And I notice like some of my clients when they are single and they're going on dates, they will hide certain things from the person that they're dating because they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of not being liked. And I'm like, you know what? You hiding who you are is going to come across as weak, insecure, fearful, and unattractive. And there's nothing more refreshing of like, hey, this is who I am. Now you don't have to lay every single out and every every single thing out in your whole life story and all your deep dark secrets. That's not what I'm saying. But just being vocal and honest about who you are, what you value, what you believe, and what you want in a partner, and giving them a, a fair chance to say, hey, you know what? This is a match, or this is not a match, because you are sharing who you are. But this happens everywhere. Everywhere we are, we go, we are met with uh, triviality, frivolity, shallowness, um, manip emotional manipulation, pe people pleasers, and it's just it's it's exhausting. It's exhausting to to live like that, and it's exhausting to be around people like that. Okay, but this video is going to take a little bit of a turn because there is a reality we need to take in consideration. And I experience this in friendships. I experience this with just people in general that I come in contact with. And I experience this with some of my clients that I coach. You, Some people do not want to hear the truth. They do not want to know genuinely how you feel. They do not want to hear anything that will constructive feedback or something that you think um, would benefit them. They are locked in. They, they're locked into whatever they're, they've been propagandized to believe. They're locked into the culture wars or the cults. Uh, they're just so narrow-minded. And in fact, if you say anything that disagrees with their worldview, they will ostracize you, attack you, judge you, and label you all kinds of labels. Oh, you're a racist, you're a white supremacist, you're transphobe, you're... The list goes on and on and on. And how can we have a healthy, constructive conversation when... You, the part, uh, you're being attacked. They're attacking you, your character, and not the issues that you're discussing. But they don't want to discuss the issues. They want you to conform to their worldview and their beliefs. And when I'm coaching some clients, and we don't, it's not, not even talking about like cultural things, just personal things that I see would greatly benefit them that probably very few people in their lives tell them. Because they are fearful of telling them because of how they react to any type of criticism. And when we're not open and receptive to hearing a different worldview, and when we're, when we're talked down or we're shut down or we're told to shut up or we're told we're you know evil, bad people, it's a recipe for disaster because 
that person only has their viewpoint when they're you're shut down and you're not being heard it only reinforces it and when you feel whether it's your 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 spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend when you your boyfriend or your girlfriend doesn't feel safe and comfortable to talk to you and that they have to walk on eggshells the relationship slowly withers and dies and eventually might just be on life support or it's just not a true honest healthy thriving growing relationship and you have to ask yourself why would you want to be around someone like that i have clients who have friends and they say i can't tell my friend that like they'll they'll confide in me and and they trust my confidentiality and that i'm not going to share anything and so it's like they can vent they can express how they feel but only because it's safe with me and they're not able to do it with the person that they're having the issue with. And really, you have to ask yourself, why would you wanna be in a relationship, in a marriage, in a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a long-term relationship, or maybe you are that person that other people are afraid to be honest and open and direct with you. You are creating something that is eventually gonna fracture or fail and it's so hard i do couples coaching as well to repair the damage of years if if not longer of people suppressing what they truly feel and people you care about suppressing what they what they truly feel <clears throat> so how to deal with it i try to deal with it in a way that expresses the pros and cons and let the person know how uh, I feel. And I'll tell them, I say, listen, whenever I give you any type of constructive feedback, hey, I, in, in a coaching environment, that's my job. That's my job to tell people the truth. And that's the only way they are going to grow exponentially if they stop self-deceiving themselves and if they stop um, sticking their head in the sand about the things that are causing them to suffer and struggle. And I've, I've had this with clients and I've even lost clients because of this and I'm willing to lose clients because of this because my number one goal is to help people and if I can't speak honestly in a coaching session with a client I'm not going to be able to help you however there are some clients I always tell clients I work for you there are some clients they're not interested in hearing difficult things or hearing constructive feedback. And so I want to find a way I can be supportive to them. And sometimes it just means listening. And clients might not even ever ask for my feedback, but they have a sounding board and I can be supportive. I can hold them accountable if they have goals or things that they want to, habits or things they want to accomplish in life. But I tell people, listen, if you react this way, what that is signaling to me is I can't tell you the truth. I can't tell you how I really feel. And this is in personal relationships as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to walk on eggshells when I'm speaking with you. And, and one, of the, the, one of the funniest thing is with, with relationships and in coaching sessions, I tell clients, I say, listen, I'm a person that believes that what has been holding you back and what will will help you to grow and thrive and break through a lot of the suffering and challenges you have is telling the truth. And I am very honest in my communication. Is that what you want? Can you handle that? Do you want me to dial it down? Again, I, I have to adapt to the clients because some people are just not emotionally spiritually psychologically capable of handling the truth and i'm not even talking about being mean and like oh you're ugly or you're this or you're overweight or you need to lose weight because you don't look it's nothing like that it's it's things that i'm picking up on and i've been doing this a long time so i'm able to pick up on personality traits on what is causing the client to have 
challenges in their with their finances, with their career, with their relationships. But when they and so they'll say, yes, I want the truth. Please tell me the truth. I want the honest truth. Don't hold back. And so I start telling the truth. And I've had a number of clients have a, a meltdown. And then they start blaming me. You caused me to feel this way. You made me feel bad. You were judging me. You made me feel embarrassed. And I'm like, do you know you are giving all your power away when you blame me? All I did was uh, share an opinion I have. If you disagree with it, why do you need to then just disagree with it? Why do you need to have such a visceral reaction? And you can tell the the mental, spiritual health. This is just a general guideline. It's not always true, but you can get a good indication of someone's ability to emotionally regulate themselves in a healthy way by how they respond to constructive criticism, how they respond to things that are difficult, how to respond to things that might hurt or, or temporarily injure their ego. It's just a, a good test. And I'll start with something small, see how they receive it, and then I'll and then I'll build up. Now there are some people that will take it on board and will not have an emotional reaction, but in their head they're thinking, you know, screw this guy. I, I can't stand you. And, and they'll quit coaching instead of telling, having all this co communication with me. Hey, Steve, I can't handle what you're telling me, you know, or we need to just really start with the small things and gradually build up. And and you the way I'm describing it, you it, you might think I'm talking about like unearthing things, you know, from their childhood and like dramatic and traumatic truths. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just basic communication, basic um calling out their excuses that or their when they're blaming other people for their own uh, suffering or for their anger. There's just a lot of anger in the world. And you see it when in a person, you see it when they get poked, how they, how a person responds when they get poked or when they have, you know, challenges is so revealing because it's easy to wear the mask and be nice when things are going well, when you're in agreement with people, you see true character when there's conflict, when there's difference of opinion. And it's madness in this in the world today, in our culture, how people just have an angry emotional meltdown because someone doesn't hold their worldview. It's so revealing of where they are on their spiritual, psychological, emotional, or self-development journey. And some people don't want to give up the victim. And when you are a victim, you need someone to blame. And the easiest person to blame is someone that is speaking truth. And then what they'll do is they'll try to gaslight you. That's not true. You're wrong. Give me an example of that. Then you give an example. Then they, no, that's not true. That didn't happen that way. Or you do the same thing. My encouragement to you is be honest with these people and tell them, listen, you're pushing me away. And then, and I want to have honest, open communication with you because I want to connect with you. I want to share what I'm truly feeling. And if they're not receptive, move on. Unless, unless you feel like, hey, they have more good than bad. And you're willing to tolerate and live with this type of personality temperament. But it's just so exhausting. And so what about people that you can't move on? Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a boss, maybe it's a family member. Then you have to self-censor. You have to self-moderate. Now, I'm not going to lie to to them, but I know the window is not open. The door is not open. I'm not going to keep on knocking on a door that is not open. And then on top of it, you know, if I try to open the door, I'm going to get punched in the face verbally because they're going to blame me as being the bad guy. And as I was saying earlier, 
I've I've lost. It doesn't happen often, but every now and then I lose clients because they just want to stay within their own little bubble, their own narrative that makes them feel, give them uh, themselves the illusion that they're safe, gives them the illusion it's not their fault, gives them the illusion that they're the victim and somebody else is responsible or that they're oppressed or that they're being controlled or, or whatever. And the best way to keep someone a victim is to convince them that they have a victimizer or someone else is responsible. Now, in rare situations, yeah, there, there is. You know, if you're being held captive um, or if, you just, if you're a child and you just can't escape the situation um, or, or you live in uh, like a totalitarian uh, state uh, where you can't express or, or speak freely. So having said all this, I, I guess the, the, the moral or the point of this video about this particular issue of how to deal with people that are not receptive is you can't be openly, directly honest with them to a person that is not willing to receive it. And you communicate with that with them and you just adapt. Like I said, there's some clients, they just don't want to hear truth. It's shocking to me because I, I feel like that's what the whole point of coaching is. You know, we're getting BS throughout all our lives. You know, you turn on the TV or you turn on the internet, it's all this just crap. And it's so nice when you do meet someone that you can have an on, honest, authentic, challenging conversation with them and they are gonna stay grounded and centered. And I encourage if you want to be that type of person and practice these skills, because we do a lot of role playing in coaching. So when you go out in the real world, you're prepared and you know how to handle these situations and you know how to speak with courage, speak with confidence and speak the truth. I really encourage everyone, most people say, oh, I don't need coaching. Everyone benefits it, would benefit from it. So, you know, I encourage you to give it a try. My email is in the description. And the beautiful thing, it makes life exciting. Like when you live like this, it's adventurous because you're not playing it safe anymore. And your, your connections are real and deeper and more meaningful. And it's just a spectacular way to live that, we're just not taught. We're taught to conform, to fit in, to people please, to not rock the boat, to not say anything that might hurt someone's feelings. Again, I'm not talking about being rude or being hateful. And that's just not the way we are being, uh, we, we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned the opposite way and we pay the price and the people we care about and the people we interact with also pay a price. And again, it's a short-term gain for long-term pain. If you uh, like these videos, please consider subscribing and liking. And if you want to support the channel, it's greatly appreciated. Even a small amount, it just kind of like gives me the desire and motivation to continue making videos. Not because, oh, it's, you know, there's a lot of money, but I know when someone is taking the time to, to make a financial sacrifice, even if it's like a dollar a month, when I know someone's making a, a, the sacrifice, it, make, it makes me know that people are getting value uh, out of this. And these videos are helpful, important to you, even though it's a real small channel. I appreciate all the supporters and subscribers. And thanks for watching and would be interested in your comments around these topics brought up today. And uh, thank you for your patience. I know longer videos, longer form uh, videos are not something that most people can get through. I mean, that's just a, a whole separate video, but our attention span has been completely ruined by uh, all the social media and the long form content oftentimes has the most value. And I just encourage people, start reading books, man.
it's so, it's just start with five minutes a day because you'll see our brains are so, our attention span, spans are so shot. So five minutes a day, but yeah, it, it really is life changing. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.